Hello everyone, I'm Bruffy1322 and this video is going to show the fastest fully upgraded vehicles in the GTA Online Sport class in terms of top speed. As always, the position counter is in the top left with the actual top speed the vehicle achieved in the top right, and for this 2020 series I'll be showcasing the non-raceable vehicles first. So even though for example the ZR380 is in the sport class and has the highest top speed overall, since it can't be used in regular sport races it's not going to be included in the main list. We start the regular raceable vehicles list with the Chameleon in 70th place overall. This video only focuses on straight line performance, so if you're interested in racing where braking, cornering and acceleration are all relevant, check the link in the description for the lap time testing series, and if you want to know more information about this testing, including the extent to which it's accurate and how useful it is for you personally, have a read of the full description as everything that you need is in there. This video lists all vehicles and is correct as of the Casino Heist update. For any sports cars added after that or other classes of cars, check the playlist linked in the second line of the description and feel free to check out my Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want to support this work and get testing results of any new cars a little bit early. So with the start of the sports cars list which has you know 72 vehicles in it, it's absolutely crazy. And because it's got so many vehicles, we're going to see a lot of cars that have very similar top speeds. Overall in GTA, when you're looking at cars in general, there's not an awful lot of distinction between their top speeds. The very top supercars only just break 130 miles per hour. I'm talking about regular vehicles and then some of the very slower big trucks and things like that, vans, are hovering around the 100 mile per hour range. So all things considered, the majority of cars in the game will fit in a, the 100 to 125 mile per hour range really and that's what we see with a lot of these sports cars where at the very bottom we had the chameleon which is an electric vehicle and we are going to see a lot of electric vehicles in this list because in general electric vehicles don't have very good top speeds interestingly probably the amorgon has almost certainly the biggest difference between its top speed position in the list and lap time position in the list of any vehicle in any class. It's crazy how quick it is around a lap as we saw in the lap time testing video but then how slow it is in terms of top speed. But yeah electric vehicles generally not that quick in terms of top speed. They've got the acceleration sometimes they can corner okay but top speed is terrible so we see a lot of those first but even at the very bottom of the sports cars list we saw top speeds of 100 and you know 203 miles per hour that like that from the blister compact and then with the neon and the ride and for example we're we're already at 114 miles per hour and we're going to see a lot of sports cars from this point on maybe up to the top 20 and we're only going to increase the top speed by about 5 miles per hour and towards the, the that that sort of as we get closer to that top 20 we're going to see about 10 or more cars that are all separated by about half a mile per hour in terms of top speed and, and that's just the way that the sport class is and the way that GTA is the, the top speeds aren't really that there's not that much between them and that's generally why top speed isn't that much of a factor in races because you're going to gain much more time from taking a corner much quicker for cars that have higher traction or accelerating out of corners much quicker for cars that have higher acceleration top speed you, in, in a regular racing situation on any normal track you're not really traveling at top speed all that much so yeah there's not an awful lot of distinction between the top speeds of a lot of these cars we're seeing a lot of ties in terms of top speed as well vehicles that share exactly the same top speed and again when we have that happen the car that has the better lap time will get the higher position so if two cars have the same top speed one will be quicker in terms of lap time like we're here with the flash gt the flash gt is quicker around a track than the ruston so that's why it gets the position even though they share exactly the same top speed and yet it's, it's generally because a lot of the cars in gta don't differ for top speed that much and you're not really going to notice that much of a difference from any one car to another until you get to the very top end of say this list or the very top end of other lists regarding the classes you don't really notice that much of a difference in general yes the supercars class is going to have a higher average top speed there's more cars in the supercars class that have a higher top speed than the majority of sport cars but as we'll see when we get to the very end of this video 
the very top sports car, the very quickest car in this list that we're going to see today for top speed, actually beats every other supercar in the game as well. So there are little you know, distinguishing uh, aspects there as well. But in general, if you look across the, the GTA spectrum as a whole and all of the cars, there's not that much to choose between them for top speed. And because the sports class has 72 vehicles in it, that's why we see that. We're, we're generally seeing the sports class is kind of like a, a microcosm of GTA cars in general because there's just so many cars in the sport class so many that could be elsewhere but I talked about that in the lap time testing video so we're coming up to that point where I was talking about a good number of vehicles that are all going to be separated by half a mile per hour we're, we're finishing up with the the Bestia GTS and the Jester here 118 just missing out on 119 mile per hour barrier and that's a very standard top speed for sports cars and then here we are with the Futo which might be a surprise because it is so slow for traction and around a track has a good top speed of 119.3 miles per hour and then we're going to see about 15 cars that are only separated by about half a mile per hour now we're still not into supercar territory levels of top speed things like the Infernus and the Bullet do have slower top speeds than these vehicles but most supercars are going to be hovering around the 122 to 127 mile per hour range we're not going to see that for a while yet in the sports class but it's kind of crazy that we've got so many vehicles that are all pretty much getting exactly the same top speed or within a quarter of a mile per hour of each other and and like I said, it's just because there's so many vehicles in the class that that is something that we're going to see. And every time a new vehicle comes out that is around this 118 to 120 mile per hour range, I'm always talking about how it's got a standard sports car top speed, what you would consider a, a normal top speed for a sports car. And this is that range because there's so many sports cars and a lot of the older style sports cars as well, like the Carbon is there, for example, a lot of those older style sport cars, this this is just normal for them. This is what they had. Supercars maybe had, you know, up to 122, 123. Sports cars generally got about 120 mile per hour for their top speeds. Obviously, a lot of DLC vehicles have been added to the game since then, which have pushed things to different levels. And now we've got quite a few sports cars that are breaking the 120 mile per hour barrier. But it's still not that much in comparison to the amount of cars that don't in the sports class so yeah obviously like i said top speed it's it's not the most important thing ever for example the locust here in 119.8 miles per hour has the same top speed as a 9f cabrio which also has the same top speed as a 9f but in any normal race you're probably going to want to choose a 9f because it's got better acceleration and better traction and the, like, like you saw with the futo the Futo has the same top speed as some really, really quick sport cars. And that's just because there's so many other separating factors when it comes to a GTA race or racing in general, that traction and acceleration are much more important than top speed. Fiora GT just misses out on the top 20 where we have broken that 120 mile per hour range now with the Comet Safari that we just saw. And now we're into the top 20 with the Serrano, which Back in the days, in, in 2013, when the game was first released, the Serrano had that extra top speed advantage, which, you know, th this was the quickest top speed sports car in the game back in 2013. So it still does pretty well to, you know, keep in that top 20. The Comet Retro Custom here in uh, 19th place does pretty well as well with 121.3. And we're going to start to see some more sports car le uh, supercar sorry levels of top speed at this point the 121.3 122 123 we're starting to creep up there but it's not really until we get to say the top five or at least the top 10 that we that we so sort of see some more significant increases we're still only you know one and a half miles per hour quicker than what we saw from you know the the, the standard sports car range so, the, the, like I said, there's not an awful lot of distinction between the sport cars, and, and that is true even now, even though we've broken that 120 mile per hour barrier. It, it's really when we get to the top 10 that we start to see significant increases in terms of top speed, and that's mainly because they're DLC vehicles, and it seems like over the years, 
the class system really hasn't meant much to Rockstar and they've just put in vehicles anywhere. Vehicles that could quite easily have gone in the supercars class in terms of their performance or, or cars that could have gone you know, in, in coupes or sedans or something much slower, they all just get put into the sports class. So just missing out on the top 10 also, we've got the two Masakros, the regular Masakro and the Masakro race car, which share exactly the same top speed of 121.8. And these were, the, 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 this was always the interesting aspect of uh, sports class races because the Masakro had the power and the top speed, whereas the Jester had the acceleration and the felt uh, had the traction. So back in the golden days of sports racing, those were the three that people would use. And it was always interesting on different tracks, some cars would be better than others. But as we come into the top 10, there's not an awful lot of older vehicles left in that top 10. A lot of the newer breed of sports cars have kind of taken over and their top speeds have just increased. Speaking of that, for example, in 10th place, we've got the Komoda with a top speed of 123 miles per hour. That's been a, a decent jump from what we just saw from the Comet SR. And we're going to start to see that a little bit more as we get through the top 10 it's not just going to be half a mile per hour each position anymore it's going to be full mile per hour and, and significant improvements paragon r 123.3 again a very good top speed some of these vehicles in the top 10 are also pretty good around a track not until we get to the top few that we're going to see the, the very best around a track so in general as always you know with the sports class that's 70 vehicles but really only two or three of them are ever going to be usable in any racing situation but there's an interesting aspect in the sports class that we've got some vehicles that aren't quite as good for lap time like the 770 for example that can compete in a race against something like a Feltzer or a Jester because of that top speed obviously it depends on what kind of track you've got but the top speed can help in some situations the shaft of v12 is pretty much the last of the old guard the the sort of I think the Shaft of V12 came out in 2015, so it's the last of that era of vehicles and the Shaft of V12 had the highest top speed in the sports class for a long time, but not anymore, it doesn't even make it into the top 5. The Schlagen GT here with 125.5 miles per hour for its top speed, again another one of those that, like the 770, in certain tracks and certain situations you can have a good battle with things like a Jester and a Feltzer that will have the better acceleration and the better lap time on most tracks but if you've got some tracks that have the higher top speed sections allow you to use that top speed from the Schlagen on the 770 you can have a good race. So coming into the top five we've got the Neo with 125.8 miles per hour that's a very very good top speed 125 miles per hour would be on par with a lot of supercars for example the Adder which is which used to be the quickest supercar for top speed back in 2013 that has a top speed of 124.8 miles per hour so we're already higher than that fourth place goes to one of a very new vehicles the vstr with 126.3 and you can kind of see how there's been quite a few new vehicles that have been added to the game that have just been given high top speeds we're definitely at 126.3 miles per hour into supercar territory of top speed right now coming into third place the top three we've got the jugular first of all now this is the best four seat vehicle that you can get taking into account everything so top speed and lap time but it doesn't quite have the highest top speed of any four seat vehicle that is still the toros in the suvs class but the jugular is so much better in terms of grip and traction and acceleration that you know in any normal situation the jugular is going to be the quicker vehicle to use for you and three of your friends and it does very well to get up into third place for the sports class as a whole for top speed second place we've got the Itali gto with a top speed of 127.8 so about a mile per hour quicker than what we just saw from the jugular and that's a very respectable top speed that would be in the sort of top 15 or 20 for the uh, the supercars class it does gain a lot more from bumps and curb boosting so the, the top speed of the Italian GTO will be benefited a lot more from that than some of these other vehicles but ultimately the number one quickest sports car in the game for top speed is also the number one quickest car in the game for top speed overall not taking into account any boost vehicles and that's the Pariah 
136 miles per hour for a top speed is absolutely insane and it wipes the floor with everything, not only in the sports class, but in the supers class, muscle and anything else as well. At this point, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already for regular lap time and top speed testing videos and updates when new cars are released and check out other classes in the playlist. But the Pariah is almost 10 miles per hour quicker than just the second placed vehicle with the Itali GTO. And when we're talking about regular normal cars, you know, we're not, not taking into account things like the Vigilante or as we'll see the ZR380, which they all have extra boosts and nitrous boosts that you can get in, in uh, it, it, when you upgrade them. Not taking into account any of those sort of special vehicles, when we're just talking about regular normal vehicles, the Pariah has been unmatched for years now and it's absolutely crazy that it has such a high top speed. In the sports class, for in, a, in, in terms of top speed, it absolutely de demolishes everything else, you know, even 10 miles per hour quicker than the Italian GTO in second. And then it, it's a good four or five miles per hour quicker than the very quickest top speed vehicle, even in the supercars class. That's how dominant the Pariah is. And, and I don't see probably anything else beating it outside of you know, special vehicles like a ZR380, which aren't raceable anyway. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to check out the lap time of all of these vehicles and find out which are the best cars to use in racing situations and put this together with their lap time and figure out which is the best car for you, you can check out that video as well. But for this video, that's pretty much it. Hopefully it's been helpful. Consider supporting on Patreon or become a YouTube member if you want to get testing results a little bit early. And remember to read the description for more info, comment with your thoughts, like the video if you enjoyed or found it helpful, and subscribe for more. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.